is Daniel Shadrach. Daniel Shadrach, please share your screen. Thank you, Ali. Uh, let me share my screen now. Uh, okay. Okay, the floor is yours. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Ari. Thank you, as the organizers, for inviting and to, in this wonderful school and conference. Uh, I'm going to talk on uh, the low molecular dynamics and related methods in biomolecular and vegan interaction. And the main focus of my talk will be how solvents and uh, the conformation of fluctuations of biomolecular lily is important and affect the interaction of the two. So I'll give a very little background uh, and the pipeline drug design is a long process and takes a long time for one drug to be approved and go to for clinical market. Uh, ideally it takes about 12 to 15 years with costing about $1 billion for a drug to be in a market. So this is true traditional drug design approach. And recently we have other sophisticated tools that can help really to reduce and shorten the, uh, the, the process, time, and also reduce the cost. And one of these approaches uh, is to employ also computational methods. Again, they also help to reduce the related um, reasons for drug failure, example, poor solubility and toxicity, because we can start and predict all these things. So in this, I'm going to share with you one of the tools that we call molecular dynamics, classical. So in classical molecular dynamics, here we are only focused on the Newton's law of motion, uh, uh, this one. And by integrating this one, then we need a potential to do that. And therefore, we can see how the molecule is really moving and evolving with time. And this can be used as a microscope to dissect and understand the atomistic or molecular interaction and can help also to bridge both theory and the experiment and can predict and suggest further experiments. So in this case, we can also understand the binding process and the unbinding process of a drug to its uh, uh, receptor or the protein as we can see in some of this uh, image here. So my talk is going to be in two areas, in protein ligand interaction and the nanoparticle uh, drug interaction. So for the nanoparticle um, protein ligand interaction, I would go first with uh, discovering the heat shock protein inhibitor uh, for cancer treatment. The heat shock protein 90, this is a molecular capillon and that exists in a two conformational state when the end terminal, this one, could be open, when the ATP, it is not bound, and when the ATP bound, then it closes the NP terminal. So this functions by maintaining, controlling the function of many molecular capillons and other client proteins that are responsible for cancer. So inhibiting the activity of this protein is an idea that we can kill and stop the function of more than 200 known client protein that depend on this protein. So how do we do this? This is an example of a client protein that if we have an inhibitor, we inhibit the function of this uh, at the ATP site at the end terminal domain, we are able now to induce proteasemal degradation of this client protein. But if we don't inhibit, then this <laughs> and then cancer continues in ovary. So it is the idea. So we tested and did some experiments computationally on how we can identify some molecules that could be potential inhibitors. So we performed a, a drug lipoposing and assessed the level of water and the conformation fluctuations in HT inhibitor. As an example, in the left panel here, we can see that we have different uh, cutoff of water. So we have a different amount of water in the protein that is a crystal structure. And then we can see that water plays an important role and affect the bind, the thermodynamic binds of a ligand to a receptor. 
As an example, this uh, molecule here, this drug, domperidone, it, the binding of it to the receptor is little depends on the amount of water that's available. And we can see that an optimum amount of water, let's say pure amount of water could be important for its functioning. But again, when there is no water, it is functioning, it does not work properly. And when there is more amount of water, the function of it becomes less. Then we were interested in understanding the law of conformation of fluctuations. How does it affect the binding of the molecule? We found that when a protein undergo fluctuations, really there is a little difference in the law of water. So water plays an important law, but again, the fluctuation of a protein has an important law to see how what works in different structure. As an example, to the right here, the water here that's uh, dotted in a red ball, they are shown how they are able to facilitate the interaction of a ligand in a heat shock protein 90. And here's a two dimensional product that shown the hydrogen bonding of a water mediating the interaction and uh, forming hydrogen bond with a molecule when it is in the active site which again brought increased the thermodynamic binding and starting to good uh, favorable binding. But we do all of this by doing a docking and uh, the algorithms for docking, they are challenged by that. They don't accommodate protein flexibility. In order to accommodate protein flexibility, then we need to do what we call the Lex complex scheme. In this scheme, we need to perform a molecular dynamics and then we can extract some sample structures from the long simulation that we had. Then we need to perform, or we can do some clustering. Then we can do dock into these clusters, and then we can assess the binding and it to different clusters. And then we can see also how the binding is affected by the conformation of this. So as an example, we performed some docking calculation from different ensemble structure and assessed the binding in comparison to crystal structures. And we found two ligands, for example, this molecule here as TMIP and pitavastatin binding at the pocket, but with different binding affinity because of different conformation of the protein. We have tried to compare some previous experimental work well, as an example. We performed the uh, calculations on the whole ensemble and also we compared with an upper ensemble and we found that the whole ensemble with the a molecule which is bound to like site more stable tends to improve the binding energy and tends to lower the binding energy than when than to the upper ensemble and when the upper having a molecule which is not stable bound to. We have tried to compare with some recent results where also they performed the uh, an experiment on uh, various cancer series. And they found, again, Pitava starting, like what we observed in uh, computation simulations, tends to have a lower binding energy and show the, uh, an effective concentration, which is uh, uh, in a good, uh, we can say, may comparable, uh, compared to other molecules here. Again, we have been using uh, different computational methods in the discovery of uh, natural product inhibitors of the COVID-19 disease. And one of the strategies that we are focusing on is to inhibit the virus to enter into the human body. So what we can do is that before the virus enter into the host cell, it needs to attach it to the angiotensin converting enzyme too, which is this one, and this attachment is also activated by this TPAPRSS2, then it's a good idea if we can inhibit this one and also can inhibit the activity of the two, then we can inhibit this one. Another approach is either to target on the virus itself, so inhibiting the viral RNA synthesis and replication. So far, some molecules that have been reported to be a, a important inhibitor for the cell entry is this nafomostat. But again, we have a lot now of natural products here. So we have screened 
a natural product that we are previously isolated in one of our group here in Tanzania from different plants. And these plants, for example, this one, Tetradenia riparia, have been used locally to manage and control the spread of COVID in Tanzania. It seems to be uh, effective. So we did first the screening and then we performed drug repurposing. So repurposing is using uh, already known drug that is approved for the disease, but you use it for another indication. So using the natural product scaffold, then we identified three molecules that's a glycosylated flavonoids that seemed to be uh, effective against many targets. So as an example, uh, to the right here, we assessed the stability against the main protease of the SARS-CoV-2. And we found at least one of the molecules was more stable compared to the other. So I think this one here, BB112665, was more stable when we compare with the other measured by the RMST. And then the stability of this, we assessed using the endpoint free energy methods. Uh, this included the molecular mechanics poison, uh, Boltzmann surface area, and the uh, ring interaction energy. And we found that uh, uh, this molecule is interacting with people in the less use at the active site. And again, with this also ligand, but this ligand did not interact favorably. And it, we observed that it also was moving out of the pocket and hence very little binding energy. The other idea was now to focus on screening compound, just targeting the, at the interface of the spike, I mean, the receptor by domain and the assay. So it's made up with uh, this uh, residues here. So this residue here is for the as receptor by domain, and this is for assay. So if we can stop this interaction here, then we are able to stop this, the virus from fusion into the human cell. So we, uh, we performed again screening, and then we found one again flavonoids which is binding effective at the as pocket here and stopping the uh, weakening the interaction between the host. So we performed again the uh, relaxed complex scheme to assess the effect of protein flexibility. And we found that protein flexibility and here improved the, the results. So as an example for this ligand number eight here, although the difference is not much bigger with the order of two kilocalories per month, but we found that relaxed complex scheme would improve the, the binding energy of this molecule when compared to the crystal structure. Then we assessed the stability of this by measuring different uh, parameters, including the distance. And we assessed this uh, in uh, 100 nanosecond. So we measured uh, this stability. So as an example for this molecule, we found that at after a time, it was changing and moving out of its pocket. As we can see, the initial configuration is binding related to the interface, but after some time, it was really going out, maybe because the strength of binding between the assay and the, with the receptor binding domain and the assay to maybe have a stronger affinity than the affinity that the ligand could bind so it could be displaced. But we went further on trying to look uh, on the distance between the acid protein at the interface when there is drug and when there is no drug. And we found that the distance was a little bit changed, but not significant when compared in the absence and in the presence of the ligand. Then we were interested looking at how water mediates the interaction of the protein and the ligand as we know that what is a biological solvent and the very important and the play laws in the interaction of the protein ligand. And we found that water is really helping or mediating the interaction of the ligand and the protein in a peculiar way that we can say. So example, we have here our molecule and interacting with the residues from the receptor by domain and from the assay. And water is trying to uh, bridge the interaction and the make stabilization here. And to the right here is just the radio distribution for different water. 
and different residues, for example, this residue and water and the ligand and uh, the water. Then the binding affinity with this was assessed by using the ring interaction energy and the molecular mechanics boson, boson surface area. And we found that at the interface, more amino acid residues from the acid to uh, contributing to the interaction when compared to the receptor binding domain, which is uh, uh, from this range of amino acid residue. And when we compare the binding energy that is obtained from MMPBCA and from bin interaction energy, of course, they were all compared. This binding energy is in kilojoule per mole uh, that we obtain minus 64, and this one was also in a kilojoule per mole. Then we want to understand uh, the binding and unbinding pathway. And here we perform the uh, molecular dynamic simulation. So as an example, here I wanted to understand the first unbinding process of a molecule. So in the top panel here, we have just the time dependent where the drug is unbinding. And when it comes to unbind, to bind again, it's where we stop the calculation and then we calculate and see how the unbinding process is going. So we can see, for example, here this dominating mode, which is at this uh, stage here, that is at the uh, binding at the interface. But with time, it unbind proceeding the uh, residues with uh, the receptor binding domain of the virus and binding via this pathway instead going through the acid two residue. And this interaction is uh, now said to have three states that we have the native complexity that is separated by the barrier of about what per kilojoule per mole, and what the free complex, complex and the unbound uh, complex when the drug is uh, completely uh, separated from the uh, protein, which is again represented by this state here when the drug is completely moved out of the pocket. Now we are doing some preclinical testing of this one to continue evaluating with a scientist from Sweden. But the same compound have been locally used here and they, they seems to be very much effective. And we have some of the extract we used, we have extracted and they are used a lot in the community and for, for people, I don't know if people can see here. Then in my last talk, I'm going to focus on the law of solvent and the pH in a nanoparticle drug interaction with an implication to drug delivery system. As we know that drug formulation always take place in a solvent and uh, the solvent really affect of this. So we use some model molecule or model drug or compound that we also isolated here in Tanzania. And we test this, the interaction of a drug and chitosan nanoparticle. And we wanted also to validate some experiment because this was performed an experiment. And we did the theoretical work on this. And we found that water plays an important during the stabilization or solvent, but not every solvent is suitable for different uh, for, for the formulations. So for this case here, we compared the two solvents, which are clinically relevant, water and the moisture. In this case, we can see that water is really favoring the interaction between this molecule here is called tocentin A and ketosin compared to when we used DMSO. And the binding stability was more favored by uh, in the formulation with the water. And thus we found that DMSO had a tendency when uh, ketosine is dipped into DMSO tended to, to, to make the ketosine to be more, you know, folded and in water to be more unfolded. And hence, when it is unfolded, then to make a strong interaction and hence there is maybe more formation of hydrogen bonding and more interaction and hence sustaining the release of a molecule compared when it is in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a DMSO. Then we were interested to understand the conformation and fluctuation of a molecule inside the nanoparticle. And then we found that the solvent again plays an important role. So for example, this molecule here, it was something that we have been looking at in the presence of water may exist maybe 
two, three conformation state with uh, we, we are trying to point the end to end distance and the keto eno distance. So it could be exiting the more bent conformation and with the keto eno uh, pointing toward and toward the keto and out by the keto oxygen. But in DMSC, is a different behavior that we can see. So we have honorary conformation with uh, honorary two conformation state as a pointing toward and you know and also bent compared to water then we can see that the water will tend to form some networks of uh, you should try uh, to conclude please yeah okay 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 yes then the last thing before i conclude is that uh, again if ph uh, has an effect on the drug formulation so before we formulated this experiment and we tested the encapsulation on uh, polyamide amide and trimmer. And this was the really motivation then that how can we computationally also view it at the atomistic level. So we're inspired also by this work that they did the similar work that we did experimental and then they did computationally. Then we found that the pH has a really effect on the degrees and the interaction of the molecule like what we found here. And I would like to give an acknowledgement to different number of institutions that they uh, collaborating together, uh, including ICTP and MIST. Thank you for listening and for joining uh, my talk. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Daniel. It was a very interesting talk. Uh, the floor is open for questions. So uh, there is one question by uh, 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 Mahmoud Akbari, who asks um, if you studied the interaction of S protein with the ligand. Mm -hmm. did, did you study the interaction of the S protein with the ligand? S protein, yes. And what were no. the active sites of the S protein? Uh, for the acid protein, uh, it has the active site. Uh, uh, I don't know how I can I show it here now. But for the acid with the with the interface, let me show you here. Uh, is this one for the S protein with the interface? The active site is here. But for the acid alone, it has uh, the active site uh, somewhere else. So I don't show it here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I actually I have a I have a question regarding uh, you know this apparent um, low cases of uh, COVID in Tanzania. So are you suggesting that it's because uh, Tanzanians are have are having a lot of these natural products in their diet and that's why they that's that's what's happening or or what exactly? Um, actually, there's a number of factors. This could be one of the reason. Mm -hmm. Because this uh, plant are plentifully available, and whoever one that feels maybe these symptoms, uh, of course the government uh, uh, approved that. Take it, use it directly. Could be the reason, but there could be another factors. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, we need to move on to our next speaker.